Please be seated. Father in heaven, we give thanks that there is a power to save sinners like us. And oh, what it cost you to save us. It cost you nothing less than your own son's life. We live because you did not spare him in our place at the cross. Meet with us now, Lord, continue our worship together. May you be glorified. And we ask it in Christ's name, amen. Each week in our worship service, we celebrate what is called the Lord's Supper. Jesus instituted this remembrance for his disciples. Bread, or in our case, a small cracker and wine, in our case, a small cup of juice, are to remind us of both the body given for us in death and the blood shed for us at the cross, also that forgiveness of sin might be secured for you and me. This remembrance is our worshipful proclamation of his death until he comes. To prepare our hearts for this worshipful remembrance and proclamation, let's turn to Exodus chapter 12 to direct our hearts. We have men who are ready to make their way back with some Bibles for you. If you do not have a Bible, just slip your hand up. They will hand one to you. If you do not own a Bible, please keep this one. It is for you. And let's turn to Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. Prior to this chapter, God had delivered nine progressively devastating judgments or plagues against Egypt, who had enslaved God's people, Israel. Israel had been uniquely and entirely Spared from those plagues of destruction, God put a mark of distinction upon them clearly. And now the most devastating and final judgment is about to occur. It is the smiting of all of the firstborn of Egypt. And then God will deliver Israel. Notice with me first the instruction, verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families and slay the Passover lamb. You shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood which is in the basin and apply some of the blood that is in the basin to the lintel and the two doorposts. And none of you shall go outside the door of this, his house until morning. It's very simple instruction, but significant instruction. Select a lamb, slay the lamb, Spread the blood, stay under the blood. Simple, costly, and significant. And if the sons of Israel follow these instructions, they will then secure their protection as the destroyer seeks out all of the firstborn. Notice, secondly, the protection. Verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. How would the Israelites have heard that? The Israelites would have heard clearly in these words that their firstborn were just as worthy of judgment as the Egyptians. What restrains the destroyer? It is this blood, the blood of an innocent, guiltless lamb. When the innocent lamb's blood was over the Israelites' family, God spared the firstborn of Israel. He passed over them. The innocent lamb died and the Israelites were delivered and they were able to go with God into all of his promises that he made for them. Notice next the remembrance. The Passover was to become a yearly remembrance for Israel. Verse 24, and you shall observe this event as an ordinance for you and your children forever. When you enter the land which the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall observe this right. And when your children say to you, what does this mean to you? What does this right mean to you? You shall say, it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians but spared our homes. At the core of their remembrance was this. Though God was right to smite, he was merciful to spare. 
He was right to smite all of the firstborn, but he was merciful to spare Israel's firstborn. And when the Israelites received the promise of the land and the Exodus was then far behind them in their memories, they were to never graduate from what the Passover meant and taught them. They were to never forget. Notice lastly their response, verse 27. And the people bowed low and worshiped. That's the right attitude. Do you see how these early pages of scripture prepare us well for what Jesus Christ would accomplish at the cross for us in the latter pages. The innocent lamb of God, Jesus Christ, shed his blood for our greater deliverance from judgment and slavery to sin. Believer, this morning, remember his innocence, remember his holiness, that he never sinned and was in no way worthy of wrath. But he was selected, wasn't he? And he was slain, and his blood spread over you, so to speak, and by his grace, you stay safe under his blood. And you are delivered, and you get to go with Jesus into all of his gospel promises for you. At the core of our remembrance of Christ in the Lord's Supper, believer, is this. Though God was right to smite you with wrath, he was merciful to spare you. How? Because he did not spare his own son, but instead smote him in wrath in your place, in mine. Believer, what should our response be, should it not also be humble, lowly worship? Think where you stand in this moment, believer. Every sin in your past wiped away. There's grace to forgive. And think about what lies ahead of you. There there is sin you will commit this week. And yet there is grace to flee it. So as you hold the cup and the bread, believer, reflect on where you stand. Reflect on where, what God has provided for you so that you can look at your sins past and know that there is grace to forgive and that as you face a week where you will be tempted, there's grace to flee your sin. That would be humble and lowly worship and preparation. And when you have considered this in your humble and lowly worship, take the bread and the cup on your own and remember Jesus. What if, however, you have not yet, to this date, entrusted your life to Jesus and his death at the cross to secure forgiveness of sin for you? When you look back on your life, if you don't see trust and faith in Jesus alone in connection with his death for you, Well, if that is not in your past, it makes a remembrance of his death not fitting yet, doesn't it? How can you participate in a remembrance that has not yet delivered you? This remembrance, in fact, won't make sense for you until God's saving work through Christ's death has been applied to you in connection with faith in Jesus Christ. So this morning, don't try to participate in the Lord's Supper yet. Let the tray pass you by. And instead, soberly consider where you stand in this moment. You've committed sins just like the rest of us, and yet you have no grace to forgive you. And you will commit sins this week, and you have no grace to flee it. You have no provision yet in Jesus through his shed blood at the cross for that grace. Take the time this morning to consider your need for the Savior. One to die in your place to forgive you and deliver you. Cry out to Jesus Christ this morning. He will not cast you away when you put simple faith in him. 
So men, please come and serve us. Take the bread and the cup on your own when you are ready, and I will return soon to close our time in prayer.